So I'm going to be beginning with the S tier accounting and finance degrees that you can get at the UK university institutions. And on the top level, we'll have NSC, University of Warwick, Bath, and University of Bristol. So accounting and finance degrees from these UK unis are generally looked at very differently. Bristol and Bath, they just about sneak into this tier. So whilst most students who graduate in accounting and finance want to pursue a future career as a chartered accountant and usually will aim to work at a big four accounting firm, which is PwC, KPMG, Deloitte or EY, a lot of students from these unis will try and pivot into an investment banking role immediately and they're well positioned to do so. If you looked at my economics and IB target universities tier list, you'll see that these universities also appear at the top of the ranking and this is because employers know if they pick a random student from these universities they'll have a good guess at the strengths and ability of them to work hard and so it's less of a risk and there's no doubt to get onto the courses here most will have A's if not A stars including often an A in maths and although in my experience as a chartered accountant you only need a good grade at GCSE level maths to be one because these university courses will require an A there's a lot of additional maths on this course outside of pure accounting knowledge that I'll get taught to you, mostly from a corporate finance module perspective. But another point from these unis is employers know even the grading at these institutions isn't straightforward. So a lot of UK unis have a very simple structure to your contribution of your final degree classification. You got 0% contributing from your first year, then usually around 20% in your second year and 80% in your third year. But some of the top unis do their very own strange marking, where it's actually the number of units at a certain level that determine your final grade. For example, in your final year, let's say you get 58, 59, 67 and 56. A lot of unis simply will take the average, giving you a 60, meaning you'll get a 2, 1 in your degree. However, at some top unis, because you achieved a 2, 2 in the majority of your units, you'll end up with a 2 too. So that feels a little bit unfair, but also make sure you understand that when thinking of where to apply. But these unis are definitely a cut above the rest for accounting and finance courses. And that's why I actually wanted to make this video because looking at the accounting and finance UK university subject ranking, it's a bit all over the place. Even when you scroll down, you've got unis like Loughborough, Bristol, Nottingham, way out of what I'd expect from them, which isn't a real representation of what the industry feels. Now, before I move on to the next year, I can't rank every single UK university, but this is a general guide. And if I don't cover a uni, then feel free to drop that in the comment section below and I'll try and answer where it'll go. So this next second tier is moving away from the pure university reputation to industry knowledge. And what I mean by that is the collaboration on the course between the firms and the degree. So on the second tier, we've got University Queen Mary, uh, we've got Newcastle, got University of Manchester, University of Nottingham, and the University of Reading. So what differentiates these degrees is that you can get a four-year degree from attending these universities, which also includes a lot of work experience in conjunction with PwC. So these will be specified as flying start degrees and are different to the normal accounting and finance degrees offered at the unis, which of course are uh, really good in their own right. But do be careful to select the flying start degree option instead of the pure accounting and finance degree if this is what you want. And a word of warning, they're super competitive to get onto. But let's look why they're so competitive. Now, if you're certain you want to be a chartered accountant in the future, these are excellent degrees to pursue. Not only will you be graduating with a top degree, but you'll be getting guaranteed real-world work experience during the summer holidays, paid roughly around £26,000 to £28,000 a year, plus a £10,000 bursary, which doesn't need to be repaid. Think of all that. You're getting a degree at a top UK university, hands-on experience at one of the big four firms, getting paid a very good salary, as well as a generous non-repayable bursary, pretty much a guaranteed job after graduation. And the work experience you do during a degree counts towards the 450 days working days requirement for your qualification, meaning you'll qualify as a chartered accountant much sooner than your peers. 
And if you are curious about the type of work that you would be doing during your summer holidays on this degree, I've already made a video of a day in the life of an auditor based off my own personal experiences. I'll leave that in the description box below. But there's also a similar offering from Ulster University. It's a Northern Ireland based university, but has a campus in London. And this degree has a partnership with KPMG. It seems to offer something similar to the Flying Start degree, but in the opposite direction, where you're actually working and getting a degree on the side. Now, a big part of attending uni is, yes, getting a good job, which you would be here. After all, you'll be working for a big four firm, KPMG, but you'll miss out on university life. So it's not really the same. And because of that, I do want to include it in this video to this specific degree, but I'd actually put it quite low because of the lack of university life. Now, another university in the same place is Oxford Brooks. Got a pretty boring logo, but it's applied accounting degrees here because of its strong connection to the ACCA, the world's biggest accounting body. It offers a degree that you can get after you pass around three quarters of your ACCA qualification. But again, with this course, you're not actually attending uni. You're just getting the accounting degree after you complete the requirements. So just like the offering from Ulster University, you'll be missing out everything that uni can give you from new friends to being exposed to different ideas. But you will get a degree from a decent university. In fact, let me just move it up one ranking because the university ranking is actually pretty good. Uh, the degree will stop in 2026 and probably be replaced with another university. Whatever that uni is, you can just replace it here. And before I carry on, if you're finding this video very useful, I'd really appreciate it if you can drop a like and click the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. And to give you guys future help with applications, interview advice, and exclusive interviews with industry professionals, make sure you sign up to the upcoming newsletter where you get all that plus much more. Now back to the tier list and still on the second tier, there's some unis which I know have good teaching standards and the quality is respected by employers. So I'm going to be putting University of Glasgow, University of Edinburgh, Loughborough University, they've got Leeds, got Birmingham, and University of Exeter. So this tier list is tough, and honestly, it's hard to compete with the degrees which give you industry experience. So unis which give you placement years as a formal part of the degree, one such as Loughborough, these are good universities to attend for your accounting and finance course. Now, you will have to go find the company to work for, unlike the Flying Star degree, but industry experience will always make you stand out. And on that point, even if your degree isn't one of those sandwich degrees and you want to work for a year, just go find a work experience and tell your university that you want to take a year out to work. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually a very common thing to do. It'll make your CV stand out from all the other grads applying for the roles who will pretty much have the same grades as you. So on to the third tier, I'm going to put King's College here, Durham, and University of Strathclyde. So there's a lot of Scottish unis near the top of the rankings. Even in my UK University Rankings video, I noticed that. So KCL and Durham, you might be surprised. The first thing is Durham is not known for accounting and finance. And in fact, in the grand scheme of things, it's a relatively new degree. I remember I applied to it when it was very new. And they gave me a BBC offer. I think even now you can get in with ABB. But they also offer a well-respected foundation year. So if you feel your grades aren't good enough to enter these top unis, that foundation year at Durham might be a good pass to be studying at a well-respected institution. At the King's College, its business school is also relatively new. It still has a reputation as a science-focused uni. And it's not impossible to be a top science and business university. Imperial is a science-focused university for sure, but it has a world-class postgraduate business school, so it's perfectly doable. Go to King's if you want the King's name, and it definitely does hold some weight. But after completing my master's there, I was a bit shocked at the business school. You can see more about that in my video where I write London unis by value. But I will say some of the business professors at King's College London Business School are very good. One actually has his own YouTube channel and is well-renowned in the world of finance. Now on to the fourth tier. Let's give Oxford Brooks some company. So students from here will generally have a better chance of getting a job at a big four firm 
if they're applying to regional accounting firms outside of London. Of course, that's a general statement, so feel free to apply to London as well. But here, the standard is still very good. Got nothing bad to say about these unis. So here I've got Lancaster Uni, Queen's Belfast City University, whose accounting degree is part of the amazing Bayes Business School. Uh, I've got Cardiff as well, Solid Uni and City. And I'll put University of Southampton here as well. Actually, see all these unis again. You could definitely get a place at one of the London offices. I included some of these in my top economics degree tier list as well. And most of these are also Russell Group Universities. And just because these unis are here on this part of the list, it doesn't mean they're bad. Entry requirements will generally be at least two A's. So the standard is still very high. One thing at Southampton is you can study or work for one year abroad as part of your degree and the university will give you strong support to give you this opportunity. That's not something which helps develop your accounting skills, but will definitely make you stand out when people review your CV. And again, a great talking point in interviews. Doing these kind of activities is what the big four firms are really searching for because they want as much diversity in their intakes as possible. So if you can show you've had a varied life with a lot of different experiences, and that's definitely going to make you stand out. So the last group to give some friends to Ulster University is the University of Sheffield. We've got University of Leicester, Surrey, Aston University. Definitely Aston University could go into fourth tier, but I just haven't seen many Aston grads working in London. Liverpool, I'm going to be putting that here, even though I know it's a decent Russell Group Uni, Harriet Watt, another Scottish university on the list. Also got a Dubai and Malaysia campus, so you can get a study abroad option easily here. Kent as well. I've heard good stuff about the course at Kent and Kent University as a whole. One great thing about generally all UK accounting and finance courses is that they provide you with exemptions or at least a potential or exemptions for the chartered accounting qualification. So to gain the qualification, you have to complete work experience, but also pass approximately 13 to 14 exams. And as long as you select the right modules, you can gain up to nine exemptions from those chartered accounting exams. So when selecting your optional modules, make sure you're aware which ones will grant you those exemptions and if you need to get a certain grade in them. Now, some of you may be thinking, what's so good about being a chartered accountant? Well, the first thing is the number of job opportunities that'll come to you after you qualify. Once you gain your chartered accounting qualification, recruiters will be lining up to give you a lot of different opportunities straight away. But the other thing is the salary. It's very good. And if you're curious about what the salary will look like from your very first year as a grad all the way to partner level, then I've already made a video which I'll leave next to me. So go check that out and I'll see you all in the next video.